Benjamin Harold Alexander, born 1921, died 1997, organic chemist, African-American organic chemist. Though Benjamin Alexander's research was cut short by a laboratory accident, he achieved much as both a chemist and as an administrator. Alexander co-holds four patents with the government for insecticide compounds related to his research. After his research days ended in 1967, Alexander began a second related career as an administrator and lecturer, though he also continued to teach part-time. He is perhaps best known as the controversial president of two universities, Chicago State and the University of the District of Columbia. Alexander is the author of over 45 research-related articles and 150 for general audiences. He was born on October 18, 1921 in Roberta, Georgia, one of six children born to Manoa Bush and Annie Alexander. In 1924, the family moved to Cincinnati, Ohio after his father lost all his money and failed cotton crops. Alexander's father found work in an iron foundry, but his failures weighed heavily upon him and he began drinking. Alexander's parents divorced in 1927 and his mother worked as a hospital cleaning lady to support her family. She saved and sacrificed so each of her six children could go to college. Benjamin Alexander went to public schools in Cincinnati. Because of his family's financial situation, he sold newspapers on street corners to help out. He graduated from Woodward High School at the age of 16 and immediately entered the University of Cincinnati. One reason he was drawn to chemistry was that the department at the university would not tolerate racial prejudice, and there were other African-American chemistry majors. He earned his BA in the subject in 1943 for a year after graduation from 1944 to 45. Alexander was employed as a technician at the Cincinnati Chemical Works, where he worked in the manufacture of the chemical DDT. In 1945, Alexander went to P. Oria, Illinois, to work at the United States Department of Agriculture's Agricultural Research Center as a chemist. He also did his own research on the side. His employment there was interrupted when he was drafted in 1946. He served in the Army in a laundry battalion in Japan as the Allies cleaned up the South Pacific after the, the end of World War II. Though this job was obviously beneath Alexander's skills and intellect, he used the time to study. He was eventually asked to be a science teacher for officers' children at their school. When he was discharged in 1947, Alexander had attained the rank of sergeant and earned 13 commendations and 12 citations. After his discharge, Alexander remained in the Army Reserves, attaining the rank of major by the time he retired in 1965. When he returned to Peoria, Alexander went back to his job at the Agricultural Research Center and stayed until 1954. He also entered graduate school at local Bradley University and earned his MS in 1950. Upon his return from the service, Alexander also reunited with Mary Ellen Spurlock, a friend from the University of Cincinnati. They married in March of 1948 and immediately had a son, Drew, together. Their marriage was strained and they divorced in the early 1950s. Though Alexander had personal problems, he continued his work and with one of his professors determine the true structure of a complex molecule. Though Alexander had personal problems, he continued his work and with one of his professors determined the true structure of a complex molecule. In 1954, Alexander moved to Washington, D.C., where he wanted to earn his Ph.D. from Howard University and their newly created graduate chemistry program. He was not accepted. Scientists at Catholic Georgetown University, though, impressed with what they had heard about Alexander and his accomplishments, got the university to admit him even though he was not Catholic and was black. He earned his Ph.D. in 1957. His dissertation was titled, The Phosphate Enzyme Activity of DDT-Resistant and Normal House Flies and Chloridane, and Chloridane Resistant and Normal Cockroaches. His dissertation was titled, The Phosphate Enzyme Activity of DDT-Resistant and Normal House Flies and Chlordane-Resistant and Normal Cockroaches. In 1957, Alexander also reconciled with his wife, and they were married again in December of that year. In 1958, they had a daughter, Dawn 
cricket together. Again, while studying for his PhD, Alexander maintained his professional employment. He was employed as a research chemist at the United States Department of Agriculture in Beltsville, Maryland, Beltsville, Maryland, from 1954 until 1962. There, his research continued to focus on insect control with chemicals. Alexander cultivated several compounds which either repelled or attracted certain insects. His work in this area led to his four co-owned patents. In 1962, he was hired by the Walter Reed Army Hospital to work as the chief research chemist in the immunology department. Alexander also was employed at an, as an adjunct professor at the American University after his graduation from 1958 to, until 1974. He took a similar post at the Graduate School of the United States Department of Agriculture he took a similar post at the Graduate School of the Depart United States Department of Agriculture from 1960 to 1968. An accident at Walter Reed, where Alexander and several colleagues were exposed to a chemical poison, forced him to quit doing laboratory research in 1967. Alexander had almost died from the exposure. Though he survived, he did lose most of his white blood cells and thus much of his immunity to disease. Alexander then... Uh, turned then to the administration of science, research, and education. First, he received training at the National Institutes of Health in the Grants Associates Program. He began his, the, he began this phase of his career in a year-long stint. He, uh, he began this phase of his career in a year-long stint in 1967 to 68 as a health scientist administrator at the National Institute of Health. Alexander then worked for a year for the United States Public Health Service as a special assistant to the Director for the Disadvantage at the National Center for Health Services Research and Development, Health Service and Mental Health Administration. Alexander worked another job for another year in 1969 to 70 as the Administrator of New Health Career Projects as well as Deputy Equal Employment Officer for spending four years 1970 to 74 as a program officer of the Healthcare Organization and Resources Division of the U.S. Public Health Service. In 1974, Alexander's career took another unexpected turn. He was offered the presidency at Chicago State University, Chicago, Illinois. He stayed until 1982, cleaning up the trouble institution with hard-line tactics. With his appointment, Alexander became involved several higher with his appointment, Alexander became involved in several higher education organizations. With his appointment, Alexander became involved in several higher education organizations. He was a member of the Committee on Women in Higher Education of the American Council on Education from 1975 to 77. Alexander was also a commissioner for the North Central Commission of the Institute of the Institute of Higher Education from 1975 until 1978. Alexander was honored with a plaque naming him the best college president in 1978. Though his university presidency was demanding, Alexander remained involved in the world outside Chicago State. In 1977, for example, he became a consultant to the National Center for Health Services Research and the National Science Foundation. He held this post until 1984. He was also given an honorary LLD degree by Bradley University in 1979, and a year later he became a member of that university's board of trustees. In 1982, Alexander took on the presidency of another troubled school, the University of the District of Columbia. Those who hired him expected the same results as he had gotten in Chicago State, but Alexander did not have the full support of the trustees and other officials. He was forced out after a year. He took over as president and Chief Operating Officer of Drew Dawn Enterprises, a research consulting firm in 1983, when his daughter, who had founded the company, went to graduate school. However, Alexander still remained active in both university administrative circles. He began an ongoing relationship as a disguise, as a distinguished, he began an ongoing relationship as a distinguished visiting professor at the National Graduate University, Arlington, Virginia, in 1983. He also resumed his pres resident 
professorship. He also resumed his resident professorship at American University, which ended in 1994. In 1984, Alexander briefly served as Interim Deputy Assistant Secretary of the United States Government Department of Education. He then held simultaneous positions in related academic bodies. In 1985 through 1986, Alexander was the Vice President of the Washington Academy of Sciences and the Chairman of the Joint Board on Science and Engineering Education. Uh, in 1997, Alexander became president-elect of the Washington Academy of Sciences. In 1985, he also became a member of the National Board Fund for Improvement of Post-Secondary Education. Throughout his life, Alexander has also been involved in his community working with the YMCA, Boy Scouts, the NAACP, and Corps. He worked in the Civil Rights Movement in Peoria and other cities. He became a member of the Board of Education in Washington, D.C. in 1966 and became involved with school administration and encouraging African-American youth, especially in science. Since 1983, Alexander has been president of the YMCA Trustee Council. Of his work in this area, Alexander told Ebony Magazine in March 1967, maybe it's old-fashioned to say, but if we don't stoop down to help our brothers rise, we're going to rise less high ourselves. Citations and sources are in the description of this audio.